Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Laughing Dragon 20k Regional Championship Qualifier. My name is Will Hall. I am joined alongside Dom Harvey, and we're going to be bringing you round number 12 of 13 Swiss rounds today before we get to that coveted top eight where all the prizes are going to be on the line. But 33 players made it into day two. Only 32 players get prizes. Talk to me about today's prizes, Dom. What is everybody kind of trying to ballot out for? Even if they don't get in their top eight, they're going to get themselves some sweet money. Talk me through it. Yeah, so the uh, 20K uh, being handed out to our players here on day two. 4,000 of that for first place, 2,600 for second, 1,500 for third and fourth, and then good chunk of change for the rest there, 5th through 8th, 9th through 16th, and 17th through 32nd. And a nice uh, round $0 for 33rd. So we'll see uh, which of our 33 competitors here on day two gets that unfortunate uh, distinction to walk home with and tell some bad beat stories about. But... A uh, lot of money here on the line. And then also the top eight, as you see there, receives an invite to the next uh, American RC in Portland. And I say next, one of the two next ones, because uh, starting with that cycle, uh, each cycle will have two RCs there. And so you, uh, not, the other one is Charlotte, I believe. So you've got your invite for Portland. You now got one for Charlotte. If you've got one for Charlotte, well, you go get your, your invite for Portland. If you've got neither, well, this gets you one of the two and you can stop there or try chasing the second one as well uh so a lot on the line here and uh, uh you know both of these uh events are just a good uh chance to play more magic so there's there's that here and we'll show you uh the mxp 10k at the end of the year that all of this is feeding into as well there. so you can qualify by uh getting top four at one of these headliner 20k events top two at uh, uh one of the 5ks and then if you've been playing a bunch of these across the year uh, top eight in points at large across all of those. Uh, you see there San Francisco, Tacoma, uh, that you saw on this very channel uh, earlier in the year. You're watching MXP Los Angeles here right now. And then uh, our winter event uh, coming up in a few months. Uh, amass enough points across all of those. That can get you there as well, at which point you'll be playing for uh, your share of $10,000 there and the, the glory. And I assume there's a nice trophy of some kind that will go with that as well. There's always a nice tweet that goes with any of that. But yeah, well said, my friend. That is a lot of prizes. That's that the main prize, of course. Out for. That is the main prize. Everyone wants the clout on Twitter, let's be honest. Also, the, we've got coming up, uh, literally next weekend, we have got a... We're, we're jumping the gun a little bit. Me and Anua pitting this uh, show on. It is going to be a No Nardu 1K. It is a charity event with uh, half the entry is going to be going to the Trans Lifeline charity. It's a great charity, great channel, great format. Everything you need to know is on the socials. It is also going to be on this channel on Twitch. So if you haven't hit that follow button, hit that follow button. As we move down to our feature match this is gonna be our last round today dom so let's fire let's finish on a high we are gonna have ourselves some gruel breach versus mardu energy now this is a, a slightly different mardu build to what we've seen so far today but what we haven't seen especially on the rounds we were doing is any sort of uh big mana decks and in this one well we're doing it in my favorite way and that's throwing emeralds at people extremely quickly talk to me how gruel breach works yeah, this is a, a nice palate cleanser for the people out there who are sick of Nardu, which I, I, I can't relate to personally, but I know <laughs> that they, they are legion. So uh, here we're throwing some big tentacle aliens at people instead. Uh, the classic through the beach Emical combo, but uh, doubling up on second part of that now with Ulamog the Defiler. So the newest Ulamog from MH3, uh, which has Annihilator equal to the and plus one plus one counters equal to the highest mana value among things in exile as Ulamog enters, uh, which you can do that in a number of different ways. But if you've got, you know, some big thing under your uh, Ugin's Labyrinth or you've exiled it with Devour of Destiny, lots of ways to satisfy that requirement. And so you thought Emrakul is big? Well, U Ulamog can get to sizes that make Emrakul look uh, like a 1-1 one -one squirrel or something by comparison. I have uh, I saw the other weekend uh, when I was playing uh, another event, Someone played the one ring, gave himself protection, thought that they were fine. They just got Ulamog out the graveyard with like 15 counters because uh, an, an Emical was exiled and just turned it sideways. The Annihilate trigger still happens and they just sacked the whole board and they were just like, no, I've got protection. I've got protection. Like, no, no, that's not how that works. And oh my God, it was, uh, it was brutal to watch and see how it all un unfolded. But starting off here, we've got Amp Raptor on turn two. So that's going to get two energy gained. We get to do the, the, the baby Cascade effect. And it's going to cascade into a nightmare. Now, when I said we haven't seen 
Uh, this is a slightly different Mardu build. This one's playing uh, a Kefalian Nightmare. So talk to me about what this card does and how powerful can it be in these decks? can't hear you dom if you're talking so it's okay it's okay i'll talk through what it does it's two mana for free energy you pay x energy sacrifice a creature return a creature of x which is the energy that you've sacrificed back from your graveyard to the uh to the back uh back into play on the other side we're just gonna do a little bit more ramping that's gonna be a keswick wolf one i believe so you know throw back to 2012 when that was last relevant in it to uh one of the, the the many ways that we can ramp with these decks and with the um... and speaking there you speaking are of, speaking of musty old relics i believe that i am back as well so uh <laughs> yeah we see keswick wolf run into talisman there setting up for uh some kind of high impact uh, turn three, turn four played, one ring. Uh, this is yet another uh, great home for that card. And then if you're all drawing a bunch of cards with ring, well, you can get to your A plus B combo pretty easily. And if that's Breach plus Emrakul, Breach plus Ulamog, uh, that that's a, a nice payoff for drumming through all of those hoops there. Welcome back, welcome back. Okay, here's another one we did speak about. We didn't see it in the last game, but we're seeing this one, Ob Nixilis. This one comes into play. We can sacrifice a creature to get a copy of it. So, you know, in some non-legendary versions, we can basically have two Planeswalkers on the battlefield at the same time. Loyalty of it is going to come in equal to the creature's power. So we're going to have one on two counters, one on three counters, both of the ability to be used this turn. A lot of damage can add up very quickly by having multiples. First, what we're going to do is we're going to tick down, get ourselves a devil token which when it dies can do a point of damage so maybe that's what we want to do with the raptor in the graveyard now synergies synergies dom looking good so far yeah we've got the whole uh like rube goldberg machine uh assembled here on the energy side and you can't spend too much time fiddling around with this because then everything's just gonna get wiped out by uh a, a big hasty emerald but this this forces benny to get all of that in place real quick because this this engine is pretty scary I'm having a look, what can we do to kind of disrupt this? We, I do see some copies of Fort Seasons in the deck. Maybe that's one of the key cards we need to find ASAP to make sure that there is going to be no hasty uh, fatties on the other side coming towards us. But sacrifice, point of damage is going to be dealt from the devil. Getting back this Ant Raptor, two energy gained, but we don't get the Cascade trigger because uh, it wasn't cast. It was just put in the in the uh, on the battlefield. Follow-up play, the One Ring, pretty good. Nixus does get round this though, I believe. I don't believe it's target player, I believe it's each player, each opponent. So we can do a little bit more uh, damage if needs be. And we're going to start off with the Planeswalker up to four. Would you like to take two life or discard a card? And discard a card, one of it being Besage. And on the other side, tick up again. Oh yeah, I think I think uh, Benny took life there. We didn't need to because he did discard the card. But then the second one did take the damage. Okay. Now we know about the nightmare in hand. What else would be good to follow up here? I, I'm looking. I mean, an Orcish Bowmaster would be good in the face of one ring on the other side. Stack to prisons. a point. Uh, I mean, it's so with enough support, right? You've got two. Different objects. is basically got the Amber Raptor, got the Bone Master. That's that adds up to enough pressure. Uh, and Benny's on twelve already. That that's that's pretty good. But Bone Master versus Ring by itself, you know, if you, you can happily draw four extra cards, give them four extra triggers, because if you're wiping everything out in one fell swoop, then you know you'll 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 take that exchange. This is a good one to hit. So we went Raptor, flip top cards. We find a stack prison that is going to get the one ring off the battlefield, generate two more energy for us. That pays us up to six. So they're staying around for a little while. And then the follow up play, another Raptor. Okay. Three Raptors now up to eight energy. Find an Oslet's pride. That's going to take us down to seven. No life gained because there was no devil from the uh, Obnixus tick up. So no extra tokens are going to be generated in turn. Ugh, could we go Oscar's Pride to generate an Obnixus extra token? Would oh, that... you sure can. Oh yeah. my god, I've now got a goal. I need to, <laughs> I need to go online ASAP. Well, that's Lab two. Room. That's three. That's four. Okay, just Never another room. copy of the One Ring. But that's pretty scary for for Inus too. 
Yeah, it was looking pretty scary at that point when it starts happening all the man. I'm like, don't, please don't go to five. Please don't go to five. So I've got a question for you now. And, it, and I, I don't know what the answer to this is. So I'm interested to see your point. Do you pay the energy now on the stack prison or not? Do you just let it go and give them another one ring? So they have to potentially sacrifice one of them. Uh, either they could reset their ring or keep the one one count one. Or do you keep paying the energy? Well, see, this is risky now because this ring comes back in untapped. Mm -hmm. And so that effectively gives Benny uh, another free card uh, from that turn cycle. Whereas uh, I just have so much spare energy, which currently has no energy sink even. That I, I think I would just keep that, that ring in jail um, and, and not let him get, have the extra card. Interesting. I'm always interested to, to see what, what, what people's thoughts on it all are. So here we're going to tick down. So the reason we're doing this is to generate the devil. So the next one would gain life on it, but then that would trigger the Osus Pride. So I, I like I like how we're doing this. It's, it's pretty cool. There's the devil token. No creatures in our graveyard, so the nightmare's still not uh, not relevant just yet. Gonna discard the card. And are we? Was that a pass? Still got four cards in hand. Chat's saying to me that um, if Benny was to qualify, this would be the third MXP top eight that they that they would have. I wonder if we can clarify that. Oh, uh, I'm looking at Amber, even though Amber can't see me looking at her. I'm seeing if maybe we can fact check that. That'd be a, that'd be a really amazing achievement to do if it was. So here comes here comes a flage, but we've got protection from the ring, so I think the flage is targeting itself. And then sacrificing after the life is gained, after an energy is gained, because we've got the guide of it's, souls in the battlefield. So now the token's going to generate in a turn. It's always funny when uh, you know with the ring protection, these things have to go out of their way to still do it. like bowmaster, where the bowmaster's shooting the token that it just created. Mm -hmm. Like it, it got drunk and it's just like misfiring everywhere, <laughs> and uh, you know it managed to thankfully not shoot itself, but it's uh, it, it was a close run thing. I believe we get a second devil token here as well, right? Yeah, we do. Man, look, look. Yeah, everything. You know I'm saying goblin bombardment in this situation is it just feels great when it happens. Oh yeah. And do we even do we have enough permanents to even get through a uh, an ember core that goes to the face now? I think we do. Uh, enough permanents and enough life. Yeah, I mean we sacrifice some of those those devils, the cats. Like at this, yeah, the ember core itself would not be good enough. That said, this is where the ember the Ulamog thing comes into play because. If you breach an Ulamog here, Ulamog looks into exile. It sees that Emrakul that's under the Ugin's Labyrinth and says, all right, well, I have 15 counters and Annihilator 15, and 15 <laughs> is enough. That, that's still going to clear everything up. So in your expert opinion, Annihilator 15 is, is pretty good in, uh, in any situation in Magic the Gathering. This so is that's my, that's my one, high two, level four, analysis. Five, six, yes. seven. All is dust, though. This is not what Ben wants to see in this situation. Kind of all in and... Every single thing on this battlefield is going to get sacrificed. Two damage is going to get dealt because of those devil tokens. But other than that, there is nothing besides the city blasting and a bunch of energy going on on Ben's side. It's all dust. All of it. Everything. You had protection the, from everything, and now everything is dust. The full Thanos treatment. He clicked his fingers, and now everything is dust. And then the last one is we'll just... Uh, you know, Pay a point in life. Go Ancient Stones. Look at the top five. Oh, next car was through the breach. Did you see Benny's face there? It was just like, ah, oh, come on. But really, Kozak's command. Uh, that once you get up to casting of these massive numbers. Uh, did he put the the command? I'm in say, okay. I'm, well, yeah. Look, okay. Look, looks like everything is being padded up regardless. But yeah, when you start casting a K command for six, for seven, you're finding whatever your missing piece is, right? Like that. That selection mode like uh, a big preordain uh so powerful and that that card is one that has really impressed me i, I was underwhelmed during preview season i thought it is kind of clunky and expensive and like you're, you're paying a lot for any given mode uh, and so many of the things you want to kill are, are big like multi region right so how often is it going to be a removal spell in practice though this card is just absolutely phenomenal and a, a big draw to playing any kind of your know, Eldrazi deck, Tron deck, or or Eldrazi Tron. We got some of that in the room as well. 
Yeah, along with obviously it added, we've got labyrinth as well. So we added another um, uh, land that can be used to mana. Uh, it, it just all goes really well. I think, as you mentioned, it, goes, it went under the radar for so many people, and it, we are seeing it do so many good things. But then all the commands tend to be good. We've been having optional modes on lots of different cards, no matter what color combination that they're going to be part of. It, it's, it's pretty sick to see. But we're going to go into game number two here. So both players sideboarding. And one thing I picked up on, which I'm, I'm interested to know how you do it, Dom, do you put all 15 cards into your deck, shuffle them in, take 15 cards out? Or do you go, I want to bring these five cards in, take five cards out, put these five cards back in? Because both players do it so... two different ways then. You definitely should, in theory, do the full 15 in and then take 15 out. In practice, it's it's a lot of hassle. And especially if you think like time is going to be an issue at all, like every second is precious. Uh, and usually your opponent just isn't paying attention to what you're doing anyway. So it, uh, so it, it's just a lot of extra like logistical stress for no reason. But if you've got your cyborg plans down to a T where you've memorized them, you're not going to have any issue remembering oh, what's going to come out? Because this is the, the nightmare scenario, right? Is you, you do 15 in, 15 out, you're feeling so clever, and then you draw your hand for game two, and there's some, like, I don't know, Veil of Summer in your hand against a Tron deck or whatever. It's like, what? Oh, wait, I, I see how this happened. Uh, you, you don't want to be on the wrong end of that. So uh, just play it safe, probably. But, you know, I, the, the, the true season professionals uh, will do the full, full uh, shuffle around. Uh, worth noting, though, I uh, say, you, you see... as you said, uh, professionals. I think we. I uh, I called that game on. It looks like Ben took the game down with the hasty flage in the graveyard. Yeah, I, how often have we said Arena of Glory plus flage is uh, the, the the new Splinter Twin for twenty twenty four? And yeah, even after getting that board wiped away by all of us, well, yeah, Arena of Glory plus flage once again just uh, sealing the deal out of nowhere. Yeah, it's a. Uh... The card's really good. Mason Clark, you made a banger there, my friend. It is a, a very powerful card and seeing a lot of play. Is it going to be able to get Ben the second game and take this down and advance the record to a 9-3 to give him the winning in in the last round? All to play for here for both players, so we'll find out that momentarily. We will see the... I keep saying Tron, but it's not a Tron deck. It's a Breach deck. It doesn't even play the Tron lands in it. It's just... You know, I see Eldrazi Temples, I see Big Eldrazi, I just assume it's Tron. My brain has been tailored that way over the years, but uh, it is wrong. This is definitely a just a big mana deck trying to get the Emrakul's Ulamogs onto the battlefield ASAP. I'm looking and I'm seeing there are a couple of Coslex returns in this deck, and we haven't seen it cast yet, but uh, I feel like that's going to be a good one if uh, that is in you know the first four or five turns of this match. Yeah, this is exactly the matchup why that card is in here and gonna see uh, that card do some good work, I think. It's a little shakier in this breach version because so many of your big old Drazi, right? You're not planning to even cast them, you just want to breach those in, but you still got the Vow of Destiny, which uh you know that that one costs seven, that one is gonna trigger the the return on the back end. So yeah, that one is is a highlight and then uh, looking down the rest of the stuff, you could board in some of those world breakers as part of this uh, K return package, but I, I think Benny will probably keep the deck kind of more focused, more on plan. And then from the other side, right now, with you know, everyone's so distracted by Nardu and the energy mirrors and so on, that you don't see a ton of hate for these big mana decks. And that's part of why some of them are seeing the success. But I'm keen to see as things move on and Nardu uh, moves out, if you start to see like more damping spheres or more, you know, Obsidian Charmor is a card that your know, Inus has in, in his side, but imagine that one is certainly coming in. Love Charmors, because it's great. Just, you know, two mads storming your opponent while giving you a 4-4 four, four flyer. I'll take it all day long. You know, when we were talking about cards that you know, went under the radar, people didn't really pick up on it straight away. What was your thoughts on the Devour of Destiny? Do you think, okay, that card, because it's got a, you know, a, a, a pre-game effect, so to speak. Were you, did you, you see that one being like kind of seeing a lot of modern play, or do you think, oh, it's just a another, um, oh, what's the one that gets you to shuffle like your, your, you can mulligan for free? What's that card called? Oh, God. Uh, uh, you, I you think it. of like a conspiracy or something? No, 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 there's a, there's a card that you, 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 if you look at your opening hand, you can, sh you can basically exile those five, seven cards and draw a new hand. Oh, Chat Serum Powder. Me. Serum oh, Powder, yeah. yeah. Like, did you think it was going to be like a, a Serum Powder out of nowhere? Or do you think, that, oh, actually, this card's going to see, see a bit of modern play? I, I thought if uh, some big Eldrazi deck or tr if Tron is, is coming back, then, yeah, Devourer probably is, is part of it. I've actually been pleasantly surprised by how much restraint people have showed, because I, I kind of thought... Well, it's a colorless card. Uh, I mean, I guess it's, it's really a colorless card, but it, in theory, you could put this in any deck and people kind of overvalue that kind of effect. And 
uh, overlook the downside of, well, I just draw a dead devourer late game. So I kind of thought you'd see people shoving these in decks left and right. And actually, people haven't really done that. It's mostly just been in the decks where they belong. So that, that's been good to see. Well, we kept a, uh, a five lander devourer, uh, I believe, in this hand. And then we're going to see it used to its ability now. That's going to pit on top of our deck a sower of our micro spawn. My cost spawn, sorry. So that can be a bit of a land destruction later on. But on the other side, we're starting off with a turn one Oscillus Pride. The exact turn you want to play it on, I've been told. Allegedly. So here's Allegedly. a Paseju and then a Red Green Talisman for Benny. So th this is the other thing about these various Eldrazi decks or even the Tron decks now, right? It used to be if you were playing uh, Tron, you, well, if you didn't assemble Tron this game, you were doing basically nothing of, of relevance. Now, if you could have a start that's Eldrazi Temple into Ugin's Labyrinth, and you're chaining big Eldrazi quickly without ever playing in Urza's land. So, uh, and even these decks too, right? You you have four, four Labyrinth, four Eldrazi Temple. Those are great, but you don't want to be so reliant on having one of those. So if you can work in extra ramp like the Talismans or Gemstone Caverns, we actually see two copies of in Benny's list, then... Uh, you're, you're finding ways to do something faster, but you've got a lot of flexibility as to how you do that. Okay, Raptor reveals, goes into another Raptor, gains another two energy. Those two lands go to exile. And in a turn, we're going to generate a 1-1 one, one cat token and pass the turn back. Not bad not bad for turn two. Four permanents on the battlefield, six dam, uh, power. How can we respond over on Benny's side? Four I mean, this would be a, a nice... Uh, a nice Coslex return, if you like, if that's installed. But just the Micah spawn. So that's going to set up, presumably, a, a nice big turn for Benny the following turn. But Anis is going to have a turn with this uh, full board to work with. Okay, I don't know what that land is. <laughs> what is that Ooh, land? Yes. Is it an Eldrazi Great Temple? Question. I think it's an Eldrazi uh, Temple. That would make sense, but... Hmm. Yeah, I'll try I'm not so yeah. I'm not so Eldrazi peeled that I recognize all of the various printings on site, but yeah, I, that, that I think that's from a, a commander set. I think I think that's from one of the commander precons. They it came with an Eldrazi temple in it, and that's that's the version of it. We get there in the end. So here comes Orcish Bowman. Well, we turn these sideways. We block one of the Raptors. First strike damage happens. After first strike damage, we go Orcish Bowmaster. Get the third point of damage dealt to it. Generate a token, and. Uh, get two points of damage across plus the creature off the battlefield more importantly for ben on the right of your screen no life gain this turn though so no extra tokens will be generated just yet so veil you hit the land in the graveyard don't want that oh we can't see his blessing one two three four five yeah we're at nine only one away I, I keep counting the energy counter as a permanent and then getting excited for a second but yeah, might as well be in these now. decks. All right, how much mana we got over here? Is this seven mana? This is seven Eldrazi mana. This is it enough to play. And I think that might be a, a alternate. Art. That's a world breaker. If I say, is it a world breaker at the sideboard? Yes, it is. Okay, so it looks like they did come in, along with the I, the other K returns. Am I going crazy? That's facing the other way from the original art, but the, basically the same art, right? I think so, anyway. That's just me, me going off and being nerdy chat. I'm sorry, just... <laughs> I, 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 I like my art, so I, I try and differentiate between them. I'm not, I'm not a good reader, I'm a good picture. Yeah, that's the old... It is, it's facing the other way in the original one. That looks like, a, again, some reprint in some set that I still don't know. As always, I can't read, I just look at the pictures. <laughs> and that, that, that actually tells you a lot less than it used to. You, you, John, look, 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 come on, you know my day job, okay? It, 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 it fits with the theme, but we're going to tell everything sideways nonetheless. Would you like to block? We'll block the Ant Raptor. This is going to get five points of damage coming across. That's going to drop Benny down to 12. No life gain. So Pride still isn't going to be uh, generating any tokens just yet. Arid Mezzo, fetch that. A Flage here would gain us uh, some more tokens in the turn. Yeah, so if you just look at what's happened in this game for Benny, on paper, it's a good start, right? It's Talisman into Micah Spawn into Turn for Wardbreaker. Like, that's, against some decks, that's a pretty impressive draw. But none of those cards are 
the ones that you are really excited about in this matchup in particular, right? So no K return, no one ring, no breach into uh, some other big Eldrazi. So we're doing stuff. I'm just not sure how much of it actually matters right now. Okay, now this, this is a turn we might get another copy of the Obnix list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine permanents. Tick this down. Make the devil. That's the tenth permanent. City's blessing will be on. Tick this one up. Would you like to discard a card? Yeah, but did we gain life? Is the all important we, question. Well, because we got a devil on the battlefield. I think. Hold on, let me just read. Just make sure I got this comment. Each opponent loses two life unless they discard a card. If a control demon, you gain two life. So I think you gain the life no matter what, right? You just don't lose the two life on the other side, which will trigger this Osset's Pride, which will generate another Devil token, another Cat token, another Obnixus token. <laughs> we did it, chat, and I'm so happy about it. Like, that's it. I don't need to go do it myself. I've witnessed it. That is so oh, no. cool to see. All right. So what? We're just ripping all this dust and uh, going yeah, to be free? It's... It's going to be very sad if uh, you know, all this dust or K-Return just blows all of this up. But we still did the thing, chat. Does the, new, does the token not end up with free, free loyalty? Like, how does that token... This is this, this, the copy token... Like, what loyalty does it come in with? Oh, Nixus says free counters on it, on the, on the main card. Or is it whatever the... I don't know how it works. I, this is where so I could it's, judge. It, it, it probably is whatever the casualty value was, but in this case... That is still one because it copied a or a sacrifice a token, I believe. Okay. So no, nothing complicated or unintuitive whatsoever. Don't worry about it. Well, it, it, it is to me. I would definitely be quite judging about it. I don't <laughs> understand how this works. Please tell me. But that's why we have judges, right? Shout out to all the judges out there, making sure that we've got uh, you know great tournaments run greatly, run at the the way that they should be done. Never be scared to call a judge for any. You know, it's a stupid question. Like I like to ask all the time. We're going to discard this, not take our two, our two points, but then we'll gain that extra life. How much damage we got? We could probably push through five damage here. Maybe six. Not entirely sure we want to go here. Ben's got anything to go with, though. So what oh we, we we fetched up there. Sorry about that, we had a little bit of a little bit of lag on our side. Here comes the Okay. So this generates the third counter. Three points of damage dealt to face, because the God of Souls generates an extra life gained plus the extra energy counter. Now we can turn everything sideways. We can give one of these flying. Which is pro but then there's there's a creature of reach, so it wouldn't matter too much. So I think we're just saying how much damage can we get across this turn? And I don't know the answer, so we're going to, you know, math is for blockers after all. Turn it all sideways. Two counters on this devil, plus the flying counter. So you block these two at the bottom of the screen. You take one, two, three, four, five, six damage coming across. And that is going to be Ben on Mardu Energy taking this one down, giving them a shot at top eight. One win away. If they can get 10 and three, we think that will lock them get them into today's top eight, which would be the third time that Ben has qualified for the MXP Invitational. That in itself is a huge achievement. So huge shout out to Ben for taking that one down. We do have a backup yeah, feature match. Great, Sorry, great stuff there from Inus. Uh, got to do the thing, right? Like, this is the kind of uh, big dream you get to have with the, the Mardu deck. And the, the pre-check on the other side, like we said, that game, it kind of did stuff, but it didn't do any of the relevant stuff. So uh world breaker x on the land but what does that really get you uh and yeah i just was able to just plow through that 